Hello, I am very honored and pleased to introduce the lead designer of the Commodore 128 and designer of the TED series and a very good friend to VCF, Bill Hurd. <clears throat> And I believe for the first time in person, a gentleman that Bill has mentioned many times in his talks, a chip designer at Commodore and entrepreneur, Al Charpentier. Charpentier. Now I just screwed it up. Charpentier. And the topic, the Commodore VIC-1 and VIC-2 chips. And thank you very much, guys. Thank you. And, and with us is uh, Professor Stephen Edwards. From Columbia, right? Yeah, yeah, long, long time uh, lover of uh, 6502 and all things, all things 8-bit. Right, <laughs> and and we'll forgive the fact that you you see beauty in apples. It, it will, it will, what, what are apples? I have no idea. What <laughs> it's the, a 6502 what based oh, system. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've heard that's of that. That's the, yeah. yeah, yeah, the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So my goal here was to uh, you know set the stage a little bit. I have oodles of of technical questions for you, um, but. Uh, uh, let's see, come on, there it is. Okay, so um, spin your minds back a little bit. Uh, 1977, this was the, the Trinity that came out. We've got the, uh, we've got the, the, the PET, uh, the Apple II, uh, and the, the TRS-80, uh, you know, later called Model 1 or whatever. Um, so the TRS-80, pure black and white, uh, character mode display. It had one trick, which you, you had a bunch of characters that had, let's see, I think it was six, uh, essentially six pixels each. And so, that, you know, you could get like dancing demons and things like that. It was a bit primitive. Um, uh, the Apple II, this evil thing, uh, if you heard Burger <laughs> Becky's, if you heard Burger Becky's talk, um, the color was actually, um, well, quite deliberate, um, but a very interesting, uh, it's essentially what happens if you uh, send frequencies at the, the NTSC uh, yeah. color burst uh, frequency. So the, the, the trick here is that uh, that actually had color and it was a nifty thing and so forth, uh, but brutally difficult to program. Uh, and then the PET uh, had this wonderful uh, PET ski uh, font built into it that you could do all kinds of crazy things. But again, it was sort of a, a, a character-based thing. We, we called the Apple an artifact generator be, oh, yeah. because of the way yeah. the color was generated. Yeah. was generated, yeah. uh, uh, as you said, based on the interference with the frequency of the color burst. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's, it's when, it, when a frequency beats with an Samore. Yeah, yeah. that's Samore. <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. <laughs> 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 it's funny. Well, was, yeah. when, I came, when the VIC-20 came out, and we were actually before the VIC-20 is when the VIC chip, and we were trying to sell it as a video game, Jobs and Wozniak came around and were quizzing me, how did we do color on the VIC-20? Oh, yes, no, yes. Because and this is, what we were, this is what I want to talk about. <laughs> right, right. So, so um, well, so mm. tell us how the VIC-1 chip came about. Like you say, it did not start as the, as the no. part of the... Uh, uh, of the VIC. Well, you didn't start as a VIC chip designer either. You no. started as a ROM designer. I was a memory chip designer. Memory I did chip. ROMs and RAMs and calculator chips. Right. Okay. Because right. Commodore yeah. was big on calculators. They were yeah. the biggest, one of the biggest sellers of calculator chips. I started there in 75 and they were a calculator chip company. And the biggest, their biggest uh, uh, customer was Commodore. Right. And Commodore calculators were really big in Europe. So they were buying all the chips from, from them. And <clears throat> so, um, at the same time, I always was interested in video, okay? Even from... It, video was cool. Yes. Video yes. was so cool. Video is yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, I remember waking up and, and I was seven or eight years old looking at the test pattern at five o'clock in the morning going, yes, yes. how did that get there? Yes. So, it was always fascinating to me, and it's, even though I designed ROMs and RAMs, since that was where somebody was paying me to do that, um, Video games was, my, was, was one of the areas I'd love to figure out how to work with, in video particularly. So I did a, uh, some ROMs for Atari, remember the old um, Asteroid games? I had done a 64K ROM at, at one point, but the old Atari 2600 only had a 32K memory space. So the sale, they, were they couldn't fit Asteroids into the ROM. So I said, wait a minute, I can make a bank switch that if they click a certain address, we'll flip over to another 32K. So 
And, and you have to be careful with that because that's a read access. That's a read access. Right. So right. that's like a landmine with a pin already. Yes. It yeah. Really, and you had to be very careful yeah. that you didn't have any spikes or anything that was going on in there. Right. But at any rate, we put this in, and Atari went, yes, we can make this work. Mm -hmm. So they put the asteroids game into it and made bazillion mm -hmm. asteroid chips. Did you actually put the bank switch logic into the ROM chip yes. itself? So Correct. that's just a single chip. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it was no different than any other cartridge they had. Sure, they sure. just had the basically Electric. as they needed yeah, to change yeah. back and forth. And so they would wait for the vertical stinking time to be able to flip what they were going to do from one frame to mm -hmm. the next. So mm -hmm. that was the concept that there. So it was my first time I actually got to play in a video game world. And right. It's funny, I made a little cartridge for my kids that every, since we made all the video games and the ROMs, I had cartridges that the ROMs plugged into so my kids could play all the video games from Atari for free. Oh, that's wonderful. We had a really good neighborhood house. Our house was very, very popular. <laughs> <laughs> the comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so um, from there, um, I still was interested in video. Now, now what happened is MOS, well, they did, we did the 6502. Right. And that, Changed the world as well. Right. Okay. And it, it beca and Apple got involved with it and so forth. But then what happened was that it it never caught on fast enough. The support wasn't there, and MOS did, they got into financial trouble. So then Commodore basically went, okay, we can vertically integrate, and that's when Commodore came in and basically. What, what took year it over. was that? Uh, end of 76, early 77, okay. roughly right around that time, maybe, yeah, 77, because Chuck Peddle had come in at around 76, and that's when 6502 came in, 75, 76, right? About a year after I was there. Okay. Chuck Peddle and Will Mathis and, and that whole team came in, and, and Bill Lynch, they all came in from Motorola. So, a, a question I had then was mm -hmm. Chuck helped founded MOS, but that's not quite true. No. The MOS no. was there, uh, there was Alan Bradley and it Alan Bradley, yeah, MOS. Well, MOS started in 1969. Okay. Okay, yeah, and it was, Alan Bradley funded it, and John Pavanen and, oh, I can't remember the other two gentlemen, Don McLaughlin, one other guy, I can't remember his name, they were the three founders, if you will, that Alan Bradley funded. Okay. And so what ended up happening during, in that 77 era, 76-ish, Alan Bradley just, Stop funding it. And they just, I mean, there was no future in semiconductors, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all industrial controls. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. What do we need? Right. Right. <laughs> it was just like mind boggling, but that's the world that back then, okay? So, anyway, Commodore comes in, we keep, continue to make calculator chips, and I, I still wanted to do video. Okay, now if anybody can remember the video typewriter, Yes. Oh yes, Don Lancaster. It, sure. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> okay. So that was that was fascinating to me. I said, okay, what can we do? How can I make this thing into something that's malleable? Okay. And the aha moment was, okay, I'm going to turn the ROM that the character set is in into RAM. Ring. Ah, okay. That was like, okay, and and I can I can make this work because if I put some ROM and RAM in there, then you can change the character set as you need. Sure. And then the object is, how do you get something to move across the screen? Well, I could make like eight or nine of them. We'll just step through them who appear to move across the screen. Sort of like the old flip card thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was the that was the concept of what we did, and so. So what yeah. what other kind of graphics things? So at the at the time, the character graphics were were reasonably well known. Mm -hmm. um, the PET had this fixed font, right? Um, and so you would looked at all these circuits and, and figured it out and so forth. The uh, well, let's see. How closely had you looked at the at the uh, uh, the TV typewriter? Actually, it used a very different technique of generating. I just looked at the fact that it was ROM. I knew what it was doing, and okay. I didn't actually go into the okay. details okay. of it because I makes good sense. Yeah, yeah. I felt that. Architecturally, it really wanted to be more of like a processor kind of structure, fetch, store, store, manipulate, yeah, yeah. and display. Well, it was it was bizarre. It used a FIFO for the which you can use, but right. you can't really write to it very often. Exactly. But anyway, You're right. mm -hmm. yeah. So that so it was a way of, and also the indirection structure of the 6502 lended it really well to be able to go and pick things out and change what character you were. Oh, you were absolutely. Going for. Yeah. If you, yeah. Yeah. Without and, random access. You, a yeah. lot of trouble. Right. And yeah. FIFOs were a form of memory back then. That, uh, that was the thing. Yeah. 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 There mm -hmm. wasn't the big static RAM that we could access, uh, you know, 
Virgin. Right. Wherever well, they, they, they were cheaper. I, I was thinking about it. It's uh, all the wires are short. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the wires are short. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I understand that the the goal originally with the what eventually turned into the what sixty five what is it uh, sixty the six, about sixty five sixty I think it was or yeah something. yeah or sixty one or something yeah something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. So, uh, I've, I've got numbers here yeah eventually, so. it, it's amazing that we've forgotten the numbers because we used to live and die by those numbers and now it's like six Vic one and Vic two is all I remember. I've only ever heard you refer to it as the Vic One. Yeah, Vic One, Vic yeah, that's, that's Vic One, Vic Two. Yeah. Because right. these numbers were made up later. Right. Um, so if I understand that the idea was originally, hey, we're going to build this this great chip, sell it to all these companies. They're right. going to make they're going to go and make uh, video game yes. consoles off of it, and that didn't quite happen apparently. No. <laughs> well, yeah, the object was we're going to make a video game and we're going to try to sell it to. Or, or Coleco or right. Mattel, somebody mm -hmm. that make a video game out of it. And, and we beat our heads against the wall for about a year and a half after the chip was done okay. to try to get somebody to, to buy into it. Hmm. And nobody would. Oh. And this, it, here's what ended up happening. Okay, now this is where another person of, of, of lore, uh, a good friend of mine, Bob Yanis, I was interviewing and wanted to fill out the staff, okay, and get more chip designers. Mm -hmm. So he was at Villanova and finishing his senior year there, and he, I interviewed him, and he came into the office, and I showed him what the Vic 20 prototype that we had, which did a video kind of a display and so forth. And he said, oh, wow, you know, would you mind if I do my senior project <laughs> on this? <laughs> I kid you not. Okay, so I said, sure, take it. You know, we have a bunch of them. Take one home. So he did. He took one home, and uh, he did a senior project on it. And then after his senior year in May, we, we hired him, and he came in, and he showed us this wonderful thing that he did. So literally, like, a few weeks later, Jack Tremiel was coming in, and we showed him this prototype, which was basically a VIC-20 where Bob, Bob had put a little operating system in there. You could type oh. on it and so forth. Very rudimentary. Yeah, but we never heard about the operating system part. Right, yeah, yeah he had yeah. built a little operating yeah, just so you could type on it and, and cool. make it, and, and Jack went, I want that. Right. Okay, and Chuck Peddle was called in, he flew in, and they had this big meeting, and Chuck didn't want to do it, and Jack said, you will do it. <laughs> and, and, and ultimately, it moved. So then the actual architecture moved out of MOS, and they did the architecture of the final VIC-20 in uh, Palo Alto. Oh, and, right. um, Bill Siler. Bill Siler, yes. Yep. James and I am. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, Chuck was very upset because of the fact that I had done that uh, phase one, phase two, DMA structure. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. which which is the lifeblood behind yes. the Commodore products was which, and we kind of knew that, but you did it. Yeah, you you said, well, let's do it times millions. Let's let's make these things share the bus. Right. And everybody else was waiting for refreshes. They right. would wait to, to the dark period of the screen, make changes, and then get out of the way. And the beauty mm -hmm. of what Chuck uh, Chuck I called it. Chuck. Okay. The beauty of what <laughs> Albert did was they could sit there and simultaneously get to the same ramp. Yeah. It's just your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. Yeah, it was truly the, the, one of the early, like, true DMA. Yes. So totally, I mean, so it was uninhibited. So the only thing you had to have was memory that ran twice as fast as your right. processor or your video requirements. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, this is, this is the hilarious thing. If you, if you plot <laughs> uh, processor frequency over time versus memory frequency over mm. time, there was you you hit the exact window where you could actually have memory faster than the processor, and that's not been true for thirty years. Right, it's, been, right. I mean, it's yeah. very nice. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that this, was, this, was the this, this this other Steve apparently did that on the Apple II as well, by the way. But yeah. it, it, it's it's sort of a sixty-five. Well, did, he, did he? See, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of the architecture of the competition. As as, as strange as that may sound, we didn't examine it and say, okay. Yeah, yeah. You just you, you just mocked just it. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They use our chips. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I understand completely. Well, that's no, it's it's a natural thing when you look at how the 6502 hits the bus. You right. do have this sort oh, yeah. of time. Yeah, it makes it. perfect yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the, no, it, it makes magic. sense. That was the next piece of the, like, okay, how do I get enough bandwidth? Because the old Atari 2600, as Bill said, yeah, it, yeah. Was, uh -huh. it was stuck waiting for synchronization with the, with the blanking times. Right. And, you know, it had to try to force feed as much as it could during those periods, and that was all you got. It was, yeah. yeah. It was a, a, yeah. a 
brutal thing. I've looked yeah. a little bit about that. It's it's barely a line. Oh man, it, it it was really it was a nine night. microseconds or something. Yeah, yeah, or it, something was, like well, that. yeah. yeah it was really right. amazing yeah. that they were able to do what they were able to do. But it was but, but, so now you breadboarded the Vic chip. Oh yes. So okay. yeah, I got yeah. That, that's a good story. That. Yeah, this is yeah. funny because. Okay, so I'm a ROM designer, memory designer, yeah. and oh, by the way, I'm going to do a video chip. <laughs> yeah, which, right. Which right. the company hasn't done before. Four. Nobody's done one of them. Okay, so well, not, not just not just a video chip, but a color video chip right. with DMA. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. What could yeah. go wrong? Yeah, yeah. Piece of cake. <laughs> so uh, they basically went, well, are you sure you can do? It? Let me let me prove it to you. I'll do a breadboard in TTL ah. to show that I can make this actually work. So I designed a, and this is back when you were actually doing taping. There was no, there was no, you know, uh, system that we would do the, uh, did the layout for you. Literally, you take the it. The PC board or, or the chip? The PC board. Okay. So yeah. So you do taping. PC board chip. Yeah. Okay. You I tape mean, the chip. Okay. But your breadboard, you did it. You actually. So I did a, a breadboard. Board. Literally, the breadboard was. But was, not, but not wire wrap. That's what I would have expected. Yes, it wire wrapped. Oh, wire wrapped. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Well, we had, we actually, I, I put all of the pieces on there, and we had that made into a bunch, and then they wire wrapped it on the bottom. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes the sense. Hybrid, yeah, the hybrid approach, okay. because okay. it was too hard to figure out all that. And yeah, power yeah, and, power it's, yeah. It's, and you could probably get the power wiring. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, so they wire wrapped that, and then, so I basically, it wasn't the full VIC-20, but I remember that I had the color stuff, or I had the, um, the, the uh, RAM working, the DMA for the RAM yeah. working, and so forth, but I didn't have color yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so they were really worried that. Okay, <laughs> and I, I literally he goes, "Well, you don't have color working yet. Right. How are you, we right. can't let you do this unless you get the color working." Oh yeah, yeah. Well, in my in my experience is, is that there's nothing easier than getting color working perfectly on NTSC. Yeah, right? what a, it just what it just just <laughs> just worked beautifully. Right. Yeah. So I spent a weekend cobbling together the color circuitry. And then that Monday, everybody, you know, the, the team, I remember the, the team came in and went, wow, you got it. And I said, and I said yeah. And mm -hmm. they said, all right, go do the chip. <laughs> so that's what I had to do to prove that I really did know what I was doing when it came to that, uh, that time. And that was, I guess, in 76, I guess it was. Yeah. Now, I, I assume you learned a lot while doing the breadboarding, too. Oh, or, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But it was it was architecturally very clean in the fact you had just a bunch of registers, registers. that you filled out, and you had forty registers, and you yeah you know, twenty registers in this case. So, and you just fill them out as you go. Right. And then yeah, so it was pretty much a simple. I don't think I had a full. I'm trying to remember, but so long ago. But I was able to get the characters on the screen, which is all I wanted to right, really right. prove that I could do. Oh, well, it's. <laughs> 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 to me, though, that's kind of the beauty of the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Vic chip itself. I had mm -hmm. I've got some uh, uh, screenshots here. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you, you know, given the given the era, of course, you have to. Uh, how actually licensed Pac-Man apparently to oh. be able to do that? I thought that was just another I didn't know knockoff. That. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, and you mentioned the smooth moving. Uh, it's yeah. it's kind of painful. All I have are these still images, oh, but yeah. in fact, the animation is the whole point. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the, the the trick here is you still have these big fat characters, but you would you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shift have, through them like, really again, I always yeah. thought the card flipping thing is yeah, like, that's yeah. what you were doing essentially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you can one megahertz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Megahertz, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another thing I found. Um, somebody's people are still writing new games for this. this they game are. Game you're kidding. 2005. Eight, eight guy is. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. This is, oh, that's a riot. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now during this time, when where was the toy and the Ultramax? It, it, was that after the Vic? That was after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What was that last one you? Put? Yeah. So what die. I have here, yeah, this is okay. this is a die photo, and so mm -hmm. this is this is the fashion these days to take these oh, yeah. chips, and which one is that? Um, so I believe this is the Vic one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I you, you, you I have this I, out right. It's, yeah. been, it's, it's missing been a while. the sprite collision logic. No, that's <laughs> why I thought it was a Vic. That's what I look for too. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've got that for later. We'll okay. look at that. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I uh, actually, okay. so you, you, I, have you have the, a, I have that in my car right now, the Vic 2, one of these. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. A little yeah, larger. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this was, the, this was the block diagram of it. Yes. So my understanding is that for uh, character graphics like this, it's mostly about counters and uh, horizontal and vertical counters and mm -hmm. address generators and, and right. things like that. 
Yep. Um, and just looking at that, that's kind of vaguely what's going on here. Yeah. You've, got, you've got a bunch of registers mm -hmm. cl controlling the, the size and all the rest of that. Correct, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, if you if you looking at a, at a TV screen as a digital structure, you just have so many pixels across and down, and you have to create the vertical blanking and the horizontal blanking periods. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a really big counter and a lot of decode right. to set the different... Mm -hmm. Bops essentially to create the signals, and with this, the the DMA axis is really quite regular, right? It's fetch the yep. fetch the character, fetch the pixels, shift right. it out, go Correct. on to the next one. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Right. That's going to change when we get to the, the uh, C64. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. Got more complicated because you had to do a lot more stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hence the serial bus got slower. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this magical little thing. So what's nice about the 6560, there's actually documentation because it looked like you intended to sell this at one point. Yes, we so did. So it's, it's <laughs> vaguely public and so right. forth. Yeah. But there's this, this magical uh, box down here, color decode. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm curious what did go into the color okay. and making all that work. All right. Well, it's, this is a riot, too, because I knew about NTSC. No, that, that's that's, that's uh, in the Atari. But anyway. <laughs> 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 At any rate, what we had was how do you how do you control phase shift, which is what you had right. to do to right. create yeah. color. Mm -hmm. So, and this this was well before you had uh, Google and Wikipedia. I literally went to the library, the public library. I, I've heard of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to learn about <laughs> what phase shifts I needed to create the various colors. Okay, and then uh, you know, fortunately, the trigonometric. A sign plus B sign, and, sure, and yeah. you create a, it creates a phase shift tan to the A over B. So once you knew that, that, all you had to do is create a little resistor ladder network. So I took a square waves, which were 90 degrees, which and then you basically uh, ran them through a resistor ladder network, which okay. created the summation up for the amounts of one of each of those two. They, they were square waves. Well, and they were. I, I ran it through a filter. Okay, so you made it into a sine-ish wave. Right. Yeah. Okay. I made sine-ish. Sine-ish. That's right. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. And so that that went into an op amp. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that basically, and then I just amplified it out to make sure that the, it was peaked correctly. Okay. And that then allowed me to make the color. So by adjusting the resistors in the two um, mm -hmm. uh, phases there. I could create any phase shift that I wanted. You were doing uh, t uh, you were doing essentially two pulses per three point five eight megahertz. No, it was two three. It was three point five each yeah. one. So mm -hmm. Yes, two. Yeah, two of them. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. So two yeah. of those. One delayed by yeah. ninety degrees. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes good sense. So yeah. Just add them up. Just and add them up, the right. thing at the time was NMOS made lousy absolute values of resistors, yes. but the ratios could be set. All you needed was the ratios. Right. Right. So as long as and that was so it, as long as the ratios were right, I could knew that I could yeah, get. Yeah, I was going to say it. A video speed uh, DAC and op amp that sounded a little bit beyond what a typical ROM designer would be doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news was that, but doing doing memory was actually a good thing because I had to work speed. Ah, oh, right. I had okay. to get things to go fast. Oh, I to yeah. Right. Huge I'm, arrays and right, the capacitance right, right. of those big arrays. Right. And, and exactly. And then and like the sense amplifiers. Oh, right. So all but analog. They look digital on the outside, right. but, but there's, there's nothing there's, digital. There's inside. nothing digital. Yeah, it's okay. all analog <laughs> stuff internally. So sense, having yeah. that speed really allowed me to. To uh, to get to the color structure. Okay. Do, do you have any recollection of you know bits and pieces on the die when, while, while I have it up here? Or is that uh, <laughs> is that too many chips ago for you? It's a lot of time. Was, <laughs> I mean, I tell you, the color was the hardest. It really was one of the hardest. I'm points. sure because yeah. uh -huh. the, doing the TTL version, as you said, really did force me to think the whole digital process through. Yeah. And 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 I remember we I had. Back then, again, we didn't have the, uh, the, the stations to work on. So mm -hmm. I had this chart, literally it was about 12 feet long, of the, the entire timing diagram of the chip. <laughs> from, from, from beginning of, of the top of the screen, of all the sinks. For, <laughs> an entire field worth of timing diagram. Correct. <laughs> By hand. <laughs> Where the decodes would have to occur. So you'd set the flip-flop here, reset it there. <laughs> yeah. and, and you so I've got to make this joke. I'm glad, I'm glad you were in North America, not Europe, right? Because yes. it's, you, you've got a oh, slightly smaller, yeah. right? you got a slightly smaller design, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on this, on this, right? 
Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, we had to do the PAL version as well. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it, it yeah. caught up to you in the end. Yeah, but. it did. Yeah. But, yeah, that was, it was, uh, but there was no other way to do it. You, you didn't sure. have simulators. Yeah. And, and uh, That's what I was going to ask. You, you, you could only simulate one horizontal line, I think you said. Yeah. And the simulation was spice, no digital simulation. No, it was, it was like all deck of cards, or by right. that time, I teletype. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, big, I, big I yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It was crazy. It would it would run all night. I mean, to do one line, it would run, and it was really just a small amount. You could do maybe a few hundred transistors. Yeah. Yeah. So so during this time, then, what was chip design like? You you would sit there and do a cell or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. and they would digitize or walk us through. The yeah. Okay. So time. you would the first thing you do a schematic, and and you would have blocks. You try to keep this thing as regular as possible. And then you would have, um, you know, your NAND gates and so forth. So you'd have a block that somebody would lay that out by hand, these are the transistor sizes. And then you would try to keep things regular so you could just step them and reuse them all the time. So you would never have, you would try to minimize the number of cells that you used. And then you kept everything from a, from a speed perspective. It was how much, how many transistors was one driver going to have? And if anybody remembers the HP calculators, the 65s with the little dipsticks in them, this is really going back. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I programmed one of those so that I would be able to say, okay, this one's going to drive this many, this size of transistors, which is this much. Then I would put that in, and it would then spit out the transistor size necessary oh, wow. in order to wow. create a rise ah, time of a certain nice. number okay. of nanoseconds. So that way I sped up. Right. I simulated it on a set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, right. nice. So yeah, I sped yeah. up the process so I could figure out what transistor sizes I this needed. This is great. You were on your own EDA tool. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> but so once you did that, then this whole thing got compiled into what you're showing here. Mm -hmm. And that was where we did have some computer aid. This structure. was the, the, the big Calma. Uh, Calma plot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. So they were digitizing those still on the on the big drawing boards and using the digitizer, or were they using the tablets at that time? Uh, no, on the big board. Big board, yeah. Because yeah. I heard the people complaining about shoulder pain at the end of the day from <laughs> sitting there doing this all day long. But, now, now, were they still cutting? They weren't cutting ruby lift at this time. I've got to try to remember, when does Ruby Lith go away? I know what, we did it for the 6502 Ruby Lith, yeah. mm -hmm. but I don't think we did, I think Ruby Lith was gone right. by this time, by, by, okay. the, by the big process. So yeah. Ruby Lith for everybody is actual red film that they would actually cut and photographically make small enough to make a chip out of, but it started by hand cutting film. So we, I think with the Calma systems, uh, they actually used essentially a pen plotter, but with a knife. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So it oh, would okay. do that. So okay. uh, they would. I'm sure there were manual touch-ups and so forth. Yeah, but yeah. this was oh, kind yeah. of the reason to use the. Big you're, you're right. I yeah. forgot about. The yeah. Plot. So it was a, yeah. it was a yeah. thing. It was like basically an eight by eight pool table size thing with a with a cutter on a, right, on, a, right. on, a, on a, an X Y pen plotter. Yeah. And and when you were all hmm. done, the thing would cut it all out, and then we would have what we'd call a peeling party. <laughs> 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 so you go in with tweezers and you'd peel up the areas that were going to be exposed. So it, was, it was half automated, right? Right, right. So right. Cutting, but the, the right. removal. It still needed right. to be photographically reduced. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then you oh, put absolutely. this in a huge camera that had a camera the size of a room and had a wow. plenum on a chamber yeah. on it, yeah. like uh -huh. eight feet by eight feet, and mm -hmm. they'd hang this ruby lith on it, and they'd shoot it down to this mm -hmm. size. Pro I mean, whatever, yeah. two by two or something, mm -hmm. and that's what they used to make the posters, which we would then use to check that all the peeling was done correctly and all the okay. transistors were right and so forth, okay? And then they take that and then shoot that down to the final size for the for the chip itself. How long did it take you to check the big chip? Because in my era, they would sit there for months with their little scales, rulers, and, and sit there and measure them. No, I, I didn't measure them, okay? okay? Because of the fact that I tried, I was very consistent about, I mean, that, that everything was a digital size, so right, I knew right. that it was, I could tell eyeball why what, right. how big things. So it's were. interconnected. You right, I was purely 100% interconnected. Okay. Intense. Okay. It took a month. Okay. I mean, literally, right. you'd have a. I had a plot that was 12 feet by 12 feet, falling on it for days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nuts. But it was. I mean, but I was driven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you saw the color at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, it went on to take take the world by, by storm. Yeah. Oh, one of the things I came uh, across, and one of the things I found uh, 
very unusual about the VIC-20 is it used um, static RAM chips, 2114s, if I remember. Right. And I don't know, I, I, from what I was reading, it was claiming, oh, uh, they had a surplus of these. And so Jack said, oh, we got to dump these into them. Any, any idea whether that uh, story is true? I don't know if that's true or not. I, okay. I got it. I designed the RAM chip that's in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, that, so that's the key. Is is first and foremost, as a system designer, if we could use a Commodore part, we yeah. absolutely did. Oh, sure. Because yeah. because we could control the timing on it, and this was back in days of allocation where you you, you could mm -hmm. hold up. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. No, we, we ended up realizing yeah. you did the RAM chip. Yeah, I did the RAM chip. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, this thing had a whopping five kilobytes in it. Of RAM. Right. I mean, I you, you, I'm, I, nice I mean, binary number there. Alex. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what that I mean, it's great. Fly by four, Victor. You know, right. Yeah. Five. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they're funny. <laughs> very, very nice. But yeah, there's, there's sort of almost nothing there except a lot of, a lot of your RAM chips, right? Yeah. A lot okay. of heat generation so going on there too. Well, I noticed those heat sinks. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's a nice one. Well, yes. Um, before we got uh, switching power supplies. Yeah. Anyway, no. so this thing took the, the, the world by storm, or at least a, a, a little bit. But of course, you couldn't rest on your laurels. It was our TI killer, is how I heard. Did you guys ever hear it called that? Yes. OK. Yeah, there was, there was I mean, Jack had a saying, a business is war. You right, were, you yes, know, I yes, mentioned yes. that, right? <laughs> yes. And, and, and he really took that to heart, yes, OK? He did. I mean, you, we're, you know, literally, we we're going to target TI. So wait, the, oh, the VIC-20 <laughs> was targeting TI or the, or the next one? Um, well, the next one was going to target TI. Okay. Oh, the, I thought that we yeah. called the next one the right. Apple Killer. Oh, OK. Um, so the Not, I mean, it was a killer. lot of different names Killers. for things. I would yeah. imagine but it was, he was trying it was to kill a TRS-80. Yeah. It was a Trash-80 and the and the uh, as we referred to it, and then everybody and the did. TI, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, that's but mm -hmm. Apple really was they never on the radar. wasn't on anybody's radar because no. they were in a different market space. They were more in the business market space, not in the consumer market space. Yeah. So yeah. they never really looked at Apple as a as right. a, mm -hmm. as a though they, they were smart better. went after the schools, yes. which we never did. Correct. Yes. 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 Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Crazy thing. Whole another whole whole other chapter. So yeah, yeah absolutely. That's for tomorrow. Right, right. <laughs> so but um, let's see. So mm -hmm. let's see. The ninety nine four came out yes. um, somewhere between that, and it had this marvelous sprite thing, the yes. 9918 right. uh, sprite processor in it. you would seen that and mm -hmm. said, I wanted one of those? Or yes, well, it was, it was the fact that while the VIC-20 allowed you to do some level of video gaming, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> I mean, it just, I wanted more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all did. Right, yeah. exactly. So... The, I mean, an 8-bit processor just never had the power to, to do anything moving random mm -hmm. memory around in the space. So, you could watch it scroll. That's was the days you could watch a screen scroll. Yeah, and it, so there was really no simple way to allow you to move more characters and, and randomly move them smoothly. So the sprite thing from the TI was like, I want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so how did you decide how many sprites? Okay, that was a function of we could only make a chip that was so big that we knew we'd have the yield. Sure. Okay, and I, and I forget what two hundred. You, you you were almost pad 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 limited right. size, almost. Almost. Is, is yeah, it was a little yeah. bigger than that, but right. not much. I mean, we knew that based on the defect density in the fab, a, a chip that this size is about as big as you would want to go in order to be able to have reasonable yield. Yeah. Do, okay. do you remember the yields on the big one? Like twenty percent? No, it was higher than that. Way higher. It was in yeah. the thirty well, to forty percent. When yeah. though, right? You know, the first. Well, that's why I'm asking the. Big oh yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. but you know, they, the process over time, they got it better. Oh, it's 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 oh, like yeah. baking. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like yes. not only chemistry but baking. There's art in how they oh, make yeah. it. Is the way I always looked at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, a recipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, so, and they got in a lot of trouble when they messed the recipe up. I I, I just. They would go the looking for the guy that ruined the batch. You right, you throw it back. Well, That's let's right. see. Did they did they fire him or just shoot him? <laughs> they him up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah. hey, I remember one guy writing a thing. I'm sorry, I ruined the batch. I won't do it again. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. I would have assumed it'd be a lot harsher than yeah, that. It was definitely a little bit yeah. of uh, well. Black so art. 
this yeah. this number of eight sprites on a line, which is a very very fixed hardware right. restriction. This is this is kind of at the heart of the chip in many respects, right? Yeah. yeah. So you've actually got a patent. Yes. Uh, on this, and this this was uh, the least technical diagram uh, that it had. It, it also had uh, uh, you know things with the uh, MOSFETs on them and so right, forth. Right. Yeah. Um, but this whole thing, if I understand, is making the decision of, okay, I'm at a pixel, which of the eight sprites yes. is visible or is the background, right? right. Yep. And so why, why is that the heart of the chip? Oh, because you have so many decisions to make at that split second in time. Mm. Okay, so you've got, a, I've got a background. Do I want to display that? Now, the background was prefetched, so I knew that that was a stream that was coming down. So now you've got, also you've got the data for each of the sprites, it's also prefetched. So now all you're doing is waiting for the timers to click over. And now once that happens, you have a decision to make as the cell to say, okay, which one am I going to display and a priority for those? Okay, that was where you had a sprite priority list. Sure. And then you were able to select the background or foreground. So all of that had to go through the right. big logic tree. Right. That was really crazy. Right. And so that allowed you to make things flow nicely. You could put things, make them visible, make them appear. Sure. Um, so there was a lot. That was because realistically, it was the Vic, that was the hard the change from the Vic Twenty to, to the Vic Two. Absolutely. Because, yeah. of, but because the rest of it was just doubling everything else in the Vic One for the back for the for, ah, the, okay. for the background. Yeah. The sprites was the the heart of the system at the time, hmm. and. Um, it was a complicated piece of logic. Yeah, I'll yeah, tell you. yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I yeah. see why you would get a, a patent on that. Definitely. So you say it, it has to go fast. How fast was it? Did it have to go at the time? Oh my goodness, we were going. <laughs> it, it's so slow today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, so it was literally about. Um, we were running it about two megahertz, as I recall, internally on the clocks. Well, let's see. Well, so that's it, 500 it, nanoseconds. It would have been the... Uh, the uh, it would have been the pixel yeah, speed, Yeah, the pixel though, speed, right? correct. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's so I thought that was rate. more like eight. I thought that was no, about four. Four, four. It four. was four, 250 nanoseconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, because okay. it was eight. You started with eight, and I divided that by two. Yeah, 8.18 ah, okay. divided ah, okay. by two. Gotcha. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Right, yeah. So that yeah. was the uh, the pixel rate. So it was, yes, it would be the 250 nanosecond decision. Wow, okay. So Yeah, that's pretty... Pretty heady for that time. For that time. Yeah. So what you end up having to do is pipeline the decision process. So you could only go through so many stages of logic, and then I would basically stop, and stop it, the pipeline, and put yeah. a, put a flip flop in. Okay, collect that information, and we'll go to the next series of logic. So the right. whole thing would shift in space a little bit. Oh, so even even the priority logic had to be pipelined to make yes. it work. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then the, then you had to go. Okay, now if I want this to appear here, that means it has to be actually back yeah, in time. You have to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You you couldn't look at eight things at once. You could only look at two or three. Right. And then two or three more, and, and then, then two right. or three more. Type it thing. got mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just a speed function. You just couldn't go fast enough to get it all done in one shot. So uh, yeah. makes good sense. <laughs> so Albert did all his work in what NAND gates, NOR gates, exclusive NOR gates, <laughs> right. inverters, and fast devices. That's, That's all it. you had in your bag of tricks. That was it. And yeah. You really couldn't go more than a four input uh, right. NAND gate. The voltage stars sure. yeah, would get a. Would, yeah. this, was, this was all NMOS or? NMOS. Yeah, okay. yeah that was why mm -hmm. it, was, it was power hog. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I, mean, I mean, we were running at eight megahertz back then, which was. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, was, was what do we stuff. do with all this heat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Oh, boy. It was, it, that got so hot. It was yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, sh they, sh they shifted yeah. this, uh, or they, they ripped off the, the lid. But, they, but the heats, but heat sinks and fans and so forth were still a decade off, and you couldn't put this in consumer devices no, at the right. time no. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the heat thing was really, th this was one of those aha. I was like a MacGyver moment. Okay, you got the chip sitting in that box there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, since that was creating most a lot of FCC noise, we did put that in a metal right. box. Okay, to, to pass mm -hmm. FCC. Yeah. Problem is, again, now putting it in the box, it got right. even hotter. Right. So somebody, we had the wonderful idea of put of of, of welding the little tab <laughs> to the lid in order to get some heat sink function <laughs> down onto that, <laughs> so we could get the heat off and keep the thing alive. Without that tab, it, it would it would overheat. Years wow. later, we were still doing tabs on everything. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> still the way to do it. It was <laughs> it was like oh god, how you, we you didn't want to just heat up the inside of the computer mm -hmm. either. So the the tab yeah. tube metal, and so metal the, the, to something outside. So I've, I've I've heard of this this heat sink concept that I've seen in, used in certain other computers. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, 
What was the deal? Uh, aluminum was too expensive at the time, or uh, the, it, it wasn't Aluminum under wouldn't have acted as an EMI shield, so we needed something to no. block the EM. Uh, you needed both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, speaking for the 128, which is just huge, that thing cost me, <laughs> gosh, 20 cents to have stamps. So some <laughs> simple, small yeah, yeah. little amount. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Fix, fix my heat problem and do FCC shielding. Yeah, yeah. let's pull okay. yeah. yeah. Put them all in yeah, air, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. That was yeah. what the People answer was. People don't like it 40 years from now. Heck with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes good sense, yeah. <laughs> So I'll ask the same question about the, the, the dye, and I, I apologize. So uh, one of the things that's always been interesting to me is how successful Commodore was uh, uh, in Europe, especially Germany and so right. forth, yeah. which right. I never quite understood. But now I understand they had the sales channels from, yeah. from before. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I apologize. This might actually be a PAL VIC-2 chip instead of the NTSC, which is what we had to be talking uh, about. But I assume they're pretty similar. Almost identical. It's just the, just the uh, few numbers. Just few like numbers. the color encoder, right? Yeah, the color encoder yeah. is a little different. And, and the uh, counters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the counter points are right. different. Other than that, it's the first thing. Do you, uh, can, you, can you guide us through any of the larger sections of this, or is it already <laughs> too far? Is it uh, too that's far? a little bit past. By my memory, banks are not that. <laughs> I, can, I can understand. <laughs> but, I uh, wish they were, but the, they're a little bit flaky the there. The thing you see, though, is now there's a huge sea of gates. Right. Kind of in the middle, and that's the sprite logic yeah, times. Yeah, the uh, okay. This is right. the this is the, this is the stuff. Whereas the Vic so. one looked like a bunch of disparate functions. This thing has this huge thing at the bottom there, and yeah. you see the distribution going into it. Trying to, and if you stop and count, you'll probably count eight, eight of, of them. Stuff. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but it's pretty easy to you find know, in, eight in of the anything. in the chroma stuff up in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. first, I don't know why I think that. I could be wrong. You're right. But for some reason, I because I used to bop in while the guys were working on it. I just for some reason I want to say the color was up there, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe yes. because of the pin numbers. Yeah, it is. It's exactly okay, right. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Did you do a similar trick with the resistive ladder and the two Identical. faces? Identical. Okay. No reason to change it. Was working fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did yeah. you breadboard this one? First? No, they they trusted me this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> wow. So you got this to work essentially on the first rev. You you right. shared with me you had to make one tweak. You yeah. got this to work on the first rev. Yeah. It, it, that, with, it was one one error in the sprite logic, and wow. It, this this is a crazy story too because. I got it in like November of of eighty one, all right, and got the chip, putting it under. And back then, the, the the line lengths were big enough, wide enough that you could actually what we called microprobe them, all right, right with a micro right. manipulator. We had this uh, tungsten needle that you would dip in acid to make it really pointy, so you pull it out real <laughs> slow and it had real really pointy. tiny point on it, and you'd put this on these calipers, verniers, mm -hmm. and then it, you would literally go in a microscope and, and look at a line. They, they removed the glass passivation, so you could go out and oh, actually wow. probe the thing with an oscilloscope. Right. And I found the logic error and mm -hmm. knew what the fix was. So we had to go to Janu we had to go to the CEA first week of January in 1982, right after like yeah. January 8th or something. Mm -hmm. So we got a fix. We cut the ruby lith, did all, no, not, we didn't have ruby lith back then. So we basically, they cut it, they went through the masks, it hit the fab like right before Christmas, okay? And they had people come in over the Christmas holiday to move it from, from fab to, from, from station to station. I got the chips like on January 2nd, plugged them in, they worked. <laughs> And we off to CES we Ooh. went. <laughs> and, and it's significantly different than the VIC-1 oh, for sure. new stuff. I mean, you, yeah. like you said, the DMA and right. now these other character modes, multicolor character modes. And, and All those things were... And they all, all worked. Free. Yeah, it, it all wow. worked. <laughs> how, how many modes are there? I don't remember. I don't remember. Andy, do you remember how many modes are in the VIC-2? <laughs> no? Some, some number from 40 years ago. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. At least four. At least four. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Oh, I was. Uh, this was another thing where I was. I was surprised at the number. So, uh, the horizontal width of the sprites was not a number that I expected. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? Twenty-one, twenty-four. I'm sure somebody can correct me. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't a nice power of two, right? When I when I see numbers, I expect them to be powers right. of two, and I right. assume something is desperately wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so what's up with that? <laughs> what happened? You know, what's this twenty one stuff? Man? Yeah, Albert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you what know, were you I, thinking, man? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
quite honestly, I'm trying to remember exactly what the rationale for that was. Uh, okay. I don't feel so bad now. Yeah, John, <laughs> you know, 40 years ago is a long time. It's more than yeah. that. But I mean, I'm trying to remember. What but but you would have known, like, so you would have been There was so obviously a logical, I mean, there was, I'm sure it had to do with the logic pipeline. Because obviously, okay. yeah, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, everything okay. was eight bit. Mm -hmm. So why did those three bits go? I just don't have a uh, okay. I, I'm sure it had to do with the okay. pipeline, though. We'll, we'll, I needed we'll some. Right. Well, it's yeah. a lot nicer than having just just you know eight mm -hmm. bits across or something like that. <laughs> this yeah. is what the TI chip had. Oh yeah, so. they definitely wanted them bigger because yeah. you, oh, I oh, yeah. yes, I that was the key. TI was only eight. Yeah, they were only eight. Oh, it was oh, only yeah. eight, and only they were four two tiny. We had more and bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The object was that I wanted to be able to almost fill a line, a full line, if I could. That was the goal. Oh, okay. Okay. A full whole line worth of. Okay. Of information. Well, I, I assume okay. it was just sort of, well, you know, our sprite generator goes up to 11 kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, how big were the Apple sprites during this time? Uh, um, <laughs> one, one, yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Depends on how strong the RF source next yeah. to the TV was. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. That, yeah, so I don't, so awesome. I'm going to go back okay. and look and so try to remember this, that. How did the 64 start? It was, it, by the way, that was urban legend where you guys said, no, Jack says, build it. Right. Yeah. So did the same thing happen on the 64? We got kind of the the you you took a Vic 2 chip. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Okay, so when the Vic, the Vic 2 tip, chips, I started to design on that before the the, the, the Vic 20 was the success that it sure. was. Uh -huh. Okay, because again frustrated, we couldn't sell the Vic 1 to anybody to do a video game. Clearly, it wasn't good enough. So let me do another one. All right, so. Nobody said no. Okay. It was <laughs> <laughs> and in the midst of designing that, um, the VIC-20 took off. Okay, so we pivoted from there's maybe a better video game with the VIC-2 chip. We're going to focus on making it the next generation computer VIC-2. Mm -hmm. I mean VIC-20. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that really focused it on that, and and originally uh, there was I think the original Vic two we only had like I think it was less characters on the line I think only thirty two right that's mm -hmm. funny right mm -hmm. but oh, okay. I said okay we're gonna make this a computer it's got to be forty because I knew that you couldn't get any more on a on a screen that and was so your dot clock dot clock changed frequency right and I went to the eight megahertz because I couldn't get fast enough right. at the three and a half yeah. at, the, yeah. at the three and a half yeah that this right. was uh, I I was tempted. To put up, uh, so I think uh, Scott Adams' Adventures uh, was one of the t one of the early things that was on the Vic, Vic twenty and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine tr reading a text adventure on on twenty two uh, column. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was always frustrating. I was sort of impressed. Yeah, so I, I could, 22 I could was see like, why ah! you would want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I really I wanted to get more, but you couldn't get it on a TV set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so you got there. the sixty four. So you got the chip and the sixty. You, who did you designed the sixty four around the Vic two chip? Right? Correct. Yeah, Rob so, is myself. We're really the, the the architects of the of that right. board. Okay. Which which is an amazing thing because uh, speaking as a systems designer, mm -hmm. you're a systems designer. You're a chip guy that knew systems design, right. yeah, and you knew how your chip needed to be used in the system mm -hmm. down to the smallest detail because you did the whole system. Right. And that 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 to me is just well. I, I think that that I like to refer to that as really understanding the application that your chip right. design is going to go into. And and today that's what if you look at what the semiconductors industry is, with the exception of of GPUs, yeah. you you really have. All the peripheral chips that people do, they're looking at the end application and designing the chip to do that. And and the NISC was a, was an early recognition of right. that, and, and right. recognizing mm -hmm. that you're going to have to, in order to get the cost and the, and the process down, you really have to know where your where your whole system is going to be. So mm -hmm. the good news was, sort of after I started the Vic 2 chip, we knew that the Vic 20 was a success. So therefore, we did everything necessary to make it not just a video game player, but a, a computer that would have some power. And, and you know, everyone, and the story is pretty well known that, that we, we actually had designed a thing with 16K of RAM to begin with, the mm. dynamic RAM. And so we, we nearly had the Commodore 16. Yeah, it was nearly the Commodore so 16. Who wanted 64K, I asked. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Jack Tremiel. Right. Okay, mm. and that was a marketing position. I remember being in, in the meeting and, and, and discussing where we were at, and we were giving him an update, and it was going to be 16, 16K and so on. And he goes, well, I think that we need to push it hard, and I think 64Ks are really going to be available. The price point's going to be 
And by the time we get there, right. the price point will be reasonable, and we just got to go for it. And and so it's hmm. big. It'll be a big splash. So that's when we changed it to a 64K system. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was. And, and, and so it, the, go that ahead. certainly meant DRAMs at the time. Well, well even the, even so the 16Ks were DRAMs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Fortunately, architecturally, it wasn't that big of a change. We just had to obviously add another address, a couple yeah. address mm -hmm. bits, but um, okay. it, it wasn't a, mm -hmm. uh, a big, you know, all the timing between a 16K and a 64K were very similar. Had you, uh, so the 6502 doesn't have uh, DRAM refresh built into it, right. um, unlike the Z80, which one of those competitors were using. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You had added the, the DRAM uh, control and refresh to the... Well, the refresh happened automatically because of the fact that the video was in the, the background. Ah, okay. So you refresh was a freebie. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how convenient. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we had to still do something. Like when we blanked the screen, we had to still yes. refresh DRAMs. And stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was some, yeah, something going on in there. I forget what it was, but mm -hmm. I mean, it was okay. pretty right. free, but the counters were there. The graphics is friendly to DRAM right. refresh. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But the DRAMs had a whole other timing, though, too, because they don't quite... Yeah, he just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the DRAMs don't quite line up Ow. with the 6502 yes. cycle. Uh, sorry, to, I, I remember what 60, why it's 21 wide sprites. Why? Because uh, that's a, you did a 64 byte thread image. You know, 63 bytes and then one that you had to waste time on. And that's ah. 21 by 24. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's I said. I knew it had something to do with the pipeline. Yeah. Of, of it fetching. is binary. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I knew I, I knew it was the pipeline, but I couldn't remember the details. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so getting back to DRAM, so you you had to deal with the fact of pre-charge and all this, which needed a RAS and the CAS. And yes. and we had to have our 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 data hold time, which was different, and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but then you had to learn about things. I, for example, the series resistors that are in there. Yes. 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 These things are suddenly, these are hogs compared to static ramps as yep. far as pulling current and these RAS timings. Yep. And were they putting capacitors on RAS and CAS when you were there in no. production? They, they were doing it when I got there. Oh, they okay. were trying to, <laughs> and what they were doing was trying to make it just pass the fixture. They didn't care what they were doing to the no. computer itself. <laughs> And we, we got in there and helped them. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I, I, I left, um, Commodore 64 was done, um, and we introduced it in January, the first week of January of 1982, and then I did leave September 1st of my mm. so. Okay. Yeah, so I, I didn't get to see some of the pain you went through. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm sorry to relieve you some of that pain. Right, right. <laughs> well, you fixed the biggest one before you left, right? Do you have your slide of the phase lock loop? Yes. Oh, yeah, geez. absolutely. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a great one. Mm -hmm. so, so in the Vic chip, it, 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 you didn't need a phase lock loop. The d frequency was non-intrusive, or was it just quieter because there weren't DRAMs? It wasn't DRAM. It was quieter, and also too, the bit rate was half. Right. So it really never impacted the well, phase as much. You never so, got the interference of the phase with the black and the white. Okay. So it looks like on the VIC, what they did is they took the uh, the fourteen something megahertz, which is the color burst times right. four times four, right. right? Right. And then divided it down, and this naturally gave you the twenty two columns. With, Correct. With uh, all the rest of it, so yep. that worked fine. Yep. Um, uh, but the problem was is that if you did that. Uh, Looked like yes, and so what do you do? How do you how do you make it so that it's it's reasonable, right. uh, and forty columns and all the rest of it, which you know, starts is, to look it's like a computer. Yeah, this is this is beautiful. I mean, it, it works on a computer, works on a T-shirt. I mean, it's all positive. <laughs> <laughs> but there's this problem. How do you how do you okay. how do you fix the speed of the pixels? Oh, this okay. is a good story. How do you, if I was say, how do you get to fix it too. I mean, you're in a okay. position of doing some for millions of units, right? And, and you've got noise. Okay, so this right. is this is Jack Tramiel wanted to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Mr. Tramiel. Oh, no. He wanted He's to. Kill such me. a nice guy, oh, though. Yeah. He was just so polite. <laughs> and... So, the reg, the original Rev One. Okay, this is the one we took to the. We only had that we took to the CES in January. Only had 36 columns. Oof. Ah, I, I did guess. not know yeah, that. I know, that's a real secret. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. I used the dot clock of 
Oh, to seven. divide it down. Right. Okay. So it was the same thing. I only doubled it up. Okay, ah, but I okay. couldn't get so, it. Oh, so it wasn't screen. moving. It was right. Yeah. Okay. So it so, worked. It worked beautifully, but only but 36 right. instead of instead couldn't of 40. Get, too many it Christmas. wasn't fast enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, too, then you had bleed between the dot, the, the black and white, and the color phase. So that if you would put a put a put ones right, in zero, right? Because it's not fake. Right, right. Right. So right. you you would you would try to put up red, and if you and if you put ones and zeros, it wouldn't be red anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So it annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> you, incidentally, what you did is you just designed the video output of the Apple II. Accidentally. <laughs> Correct. That's what I did, <laughs> and I hated it. No wonder. <laughs> So, oh, so no wonder we, you were in pain. We owe yeah. our legacy to the app. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so now I get back from uh, the CES show, and I wanted to get to an 80-character display without these problems. So that's when we came up with the 8 right. megahertz. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I, I changed the clocks in the chip, changed the decoders, because and, and the rev I did on that real quick turn wasn't... It needed to be redone. We had sure, really, sure. so we had to clean it up for production. And I put this stuff in to really. Now we have really forty characters and no crossover between them. Hmm. And it came out. We plugged it in, and it had a shimmer. Uh, so did you have two independent? Ah, okay. I had yep. two independent crystals, and they were drifting, and the screen had this ghosting, shimmering effect. Nice. Oh, it was really uh -huh. ugly. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. Like, uh -huh. And I was yeah. going, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, and I still use that term, the ocean moments when you haven't designed, and that was right. one of them. Mm. Right. So, anyway, you couldn't have predicted it without. Well, how those I are tried. didn't know. Yeah, they're yeah. they're pretty rare. Most of the time, it's like, oh, that's awful. Why is that? Whereas an oh shit moment is exactly you realize just how deep it is right. into it, and right. I'm okay. really deep into it. Yeah, yeah. Because this yeah. thing was supposed to go into production in May, right. and you've changed the counter. <laughs> and I changed the counter scheme, and and, and I'm in trouble. <laughs> Right. So, anyway, um, there was a guy uh, who worked at the company called Bob Simons, okay, mm -hmm. and he had worked um, for a, uh, I think, Motorola, and he went, oh, we can fix this with a phase lock loop. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't know what a phase lock loop was. Okay. Right, right. So, that was an evil analog thing. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Even the memory designers right. didn't have to deal with these. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he basically... Gen one up, and you know, in a little card, and, and and wire wrapped it and plugged it in, and it worked. Wow. Okay, so I have to give him a lot of kudos for for, for and, that. And it's an LS VC. I mean, it's an LS phase lock loop yeah. part of it there. Yeah. yeah, it was it was pretty pretty interesting stuff that he was able. Yeah, we we, mm -hmm. we had to tune it right, but yeah. once the once the dot clock and the color phase clock were synchronized. Yeah. Then you had no problems and it worked yeah. beautifully. Okay. So well, that was a band aid. It's actually, it, uh, so the function of the phase lock loop here actually is very simple. Uh, it divides by seven and then multiplies by four. Right. And the issue is how do you build a piece of circuitry that multiplies the speed of a clock? Right. And the answer is you build a voltage controlled oscillator, you look at the results, and then you tune the the frequency that comes out based on, oh, that came a little too early, came a little bit too late. Right. It's constantly uh, hunting. Feedback. Right. It's a, it's a feedback thing. It's very, very complicated. And incidentally, you can also use these things to tune FM stations. It, it's an FM detector. Right. But this is a steaming pile of logic that you would not <laughs> want. You do not want in your cheap consumer... <laughs> Device. And, and you're going to production. And you're going and into production and right. no place. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to pass uh, FCC. FCC. Yes. All right. And right. you got right. these clocks. And so, I, by the way, you've got this, this analog oscillator operating at you know a few megahertz or whatever. You, you do have a nice disciplined crystal up here right. in the lower right, but all the rest of this stuff. Um, and you know, zeners and charge pumps and phase detects and oh, stop it! Yeah, right. yeah, 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 this is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It was absolutely, I, I, and I can still remember it. So I had to make the fix and, and put this thing together, and then eventually the word of, of this problem filters up to Jack Tremiel. 
Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh, you didn't run to him right away to show no, him? No, I fixed it before we did that. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Of a solution. Yeah, I yeah, went, yeah okay. well, we have a problem, but here's the fix. Okay, <laughs> so we had to add the circuitry to it, and and um, he got so anyway. <laughs> he, I can still remember him, like standing up and ready to jump at me across the that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you could have cost us this company. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, well, but but we didn't. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, all, I was all 29 years old. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I was, I was 24, 25. Yeah, I mean, uh, it well, was, let's it was see. You, you were 29 before you went into the office. <laughs> what were 40. you after? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, that was, that was definitely one of those, how are we going to get out of this mess? And uh, wow. fortunately, this was a good Band-Aid that worked great. And yeah. Solved yeah. the problem. But, well, the yeah. problems with it? Or was there any production <laughs> problems with the Mick chip guys? <laughs> so they, they did a tiger team. You correct me, and I'm, I'm looking at Andy. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I say Andy is over yeah. there. They, these guys had to clean up my mess. Mm. So, well, one trick I'll, I'll talk to talk about real quick was we had light blue flicker on dark blue, right? And they mm. made it, which is uh, the, the home screen has light blue characters on dark blue. And in a character cell, if it, part of the DRAM cycle got botched, it Collect, it's yeah. like the foreground color instead of the background color. So light blue snow everywhere look, looked like crap. Um, what they did is they went in and changed the characters in the cells that are supposed to be dark blue. They made the foreground and the background color both the same color of dark blue. So it's still flickering, but it's flickering dark blue on dark blue. Oh, so it, even on the oldest ones, if you look, if there's a cell with a character in it, you'll see like some dots getting into that cell too, but the rest of the screen is, is pretty blue. So it was, they, it was ram timing problem? Yeah, we had some ram oh. timing problems. <laughs> really? <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> it well, of, how can you expect? He didn't design the DRAMs, right? <laughs> Just the SRAMs. Well, so another story, because I ended up in the bucket for what we called uh, where you babysat production for the C64. And uh, Micron DRAMs, we had a big problem with, and it was sensitive in certain positions, the end of the row. How about that? And the problem was both of us. They weren't making the DRAMs right, and we weren't quite using them right, and it showed up in two locations on the board. And so we got better at it, and, and they, they, you know, Diorio got in and changed right. some of the timings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we worked through a couple. Yeah. Mostly getting the heat out. We went to That's a really exactly, top, yeah. Right. Uh, copper uh, lead frame got more of the heat out and a lot of the problems, fix, I don't want to say fix themselves, so, but, but move they, back into it. Right, yeah, because they got so hot that the part would slow down and, and, and yeah. that, I mean, we, we used to see that when, when before a heat sink, it would spark, the screen would start to sparkle. sparkle right. Yeah, mm -hmm. the sparkle effect on the screen, it was mm -hmm. just terrible. But, Although yeah. I, I, I actively teach students to build the stuff we use, FPGAs and so forth, but one of the things I always loved about working on graphics hardware is that the bugs were visible. Visible. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could just Good look point. at it and it's, yeah. wait, that's not supposed to shimmer. Right. That's not supposed yeah. to flicker. Not supposed to do that. So yeah. it's been true time immemorial. Right. Right. The difference being you didn't bet the whole company on it. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Did we want to take some questions or how are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing okay on time. We've got another half hour. Oh, do um, we? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I've, been, I've, been, I've been pushing here mm -hmm. and it's, it's actually worked pretty well. Okay. Um, uh, a very technical question I had is so you have eight sprites, period. Mm -hmm. Now the the TI ninety nine four A's chip, the ninety nine eighteen, uh, I think actually had thirty two, but you could only do four per line, mm -hmm. and okay. it was doing much more elaborate DMA to sort of th fill the shift registers and so forth. And so I'm curious why the why the architectural shift, or whether that was deliberate, or whether that was. It was deliberate. I mean, it was, it was a matter of what I felt was if I could make a bigger sprite, okay? And that's where the idea of the uh, interrupt on the, on the raster, yeah, that yeah. really was a thought process where I said, okay, if I make these things big enough, you can put a big enough article and you could combine two or three of them and get really something elaborate sure. that you can move around. Mm -hmm. And then if you, once you finish using it, then you can get an interrupt, change the pointer, right. and now you could have another one displayed. So having eight, again, was a function of how big I could make the chip, mm -hmm. but then the raster interrupt function allowed you to reuse them on the second half of the screen once it was, re once it was actually used. Makes sense. So I felt that, again, it was a, it was a, mm -hmm. it was a, 
architectural workarounds since I couldn't get more than eight to fit on the chip anyway. You, sure. you could reuse sure. your cloud sprite as a car sprite. Correct. Basically. Yeah, that one. That was just a single pointer and change your co uh, coordinates. Okay. Now, were you were you sucking in the entire? It sounds like you were sucking in the entire yeah. sixty-four byte sprite. Mm -hmm. um, when the beginning of each line? Um, no. Each, it's, um, once yeah, per you frame? had to. I'm trying to remember uh, every eight lines. Every eight lines, would, right? Yeah, exactly. Would slam every eight out lines. DMA, right? Because oh, okay. you had eight sixty-four. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Which, which is why then we went from the fifteen forty disk drive to the fifteen forty-one disk drive. The serial bus timing had to allow for the VIC chip to take over for that entire Sorry, line at fifty-three micro, sixty microseconds, whatever it is. We go ah, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over. Which, <laughs> which, by the way, the the, the, the cruel mistress. <laughs> She, she runs the chip. Once you set her up, it's, it truly is the heart of the system. It's yeah. calling all the shots oh, yeah, in there. It. And the yeah. processor is just there to like, no, oh, oh, go left, go left. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's the big chip doing the work. Yeah, that was the, the I mean, again, we to find the, right? the yeah. heart of yeah. what you're doing, and everything else was ancillary were you, to that. Were you no longer using the uh, even odd uh, cycle part. trick? Yeah, but it still oh. wasn't enough bandwidth. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. So when it got really intense, right. you said, okay, CPU. Mine. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. he well, won. That's... He always won. <laughs> oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, that was actually one of the bigger things I was thinking about. So you did not put a 6502 in, this, in the Commodore 64. It's a 6410. 6510, yeah. Or 6510, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Um, and so... Let's see. So one of the big changes was mm -hmm. uh, you could say, okay, 6502, you don't get to play with the address. Um, try state your address bus right. so you could do it. So you could actually do the DMA yep. uh, and all the rest of it. And it sounds like you could also tell it, you know, wait, don't do another cycle yes. and so forth. Okay, so it, yeah. really, it really did. He really would stop cleanly, too. He, yeah. he yeah. wouldn't stop and botch the last cycle. He'd go... Okay, yours. <laughs> yep. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that so, was that yeah, was that a, was the key just because you just, yeah. just I, I was so doing the serial bus, but sure, I'll stop and right. Okay, yeah. that yeah. makes yeah. sense. So I just hung it up essentially because yeah. there was really no other elegant way to do it. No, mm -hmm. yeah, but that was elegant. Well, yeah, it was yeah. the only thing well, I could come up with at the yeah. time was, that would, that, would that, make that work. That was yeah. DMA in the in the modern sense of it, I would say. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was because it's like, okay, hold off. Yeah. And then start up again. And yeah. you thought of it, implemented, and it worked, and you sold millions. I mean, right. that to what's, me what's is that whole chain of events. <laughs> yeah. of going well, that, that minor little thing. Detail. Yeah. Uh -huh. Millions. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. <coughs> trying to think of uh, something. My, yeah, my, my, my mind is just blanked. Yeah, I know. We went, I, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, board. yeah. Okay. It, it's probably a lack of refresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Very good. It's a, well, I'm trying to be complimentary here. But, you know, it's... Uh, what was the rule we had? So, and you, you got the VIC-2, so the VIC-1 you got working in one rev, or the first rev worked, and the VIC-2 took... Took two. Well, two, and then my my deciding to make a 40-character thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right, so right, great. I forgot right. about yeah. that, right. Yeah, yeah. nice little fix. Yeah. Less, uh, I, and I think it was a worthwhile... I think we all thank you yeah, for that. I really, Definitely. you know, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely taking a shot, taking some chances, but... Eh. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> so one of the things that's cool in the in the Commodore 64 is you've got that uh, quad bipolar pass device for the color. Oh, rate. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was not a typical hardware engineer. I mean, we knew about this part. We loved this part, actually. Um, but uh, 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 Albert built in... For the color RAM, instead of the logic that says, oh, I'm going this way, I'm going that way, is it your turn, is it my turn? He made it a t pass device and said, if you can get there, it's yours. Yeah. That's basically what it's saying. Yeah. So in the 128, I looked at it and said, well, let's see what the logic would be like to make that a true, uh, no, go this way, go that way, stop. And I looked at it, and we could do it. And I said, no, better the way it was. And yeah. we, it was we, so cheap. It was one it was chip, so, and it worked. Yeah. And I didn't have to worry about compatibility. Right. With yeah. with the sixty four, right. so I was yeah. So pass transistor is something that you get to use in a chip, right? Okay, it's it's the part just goes through. It's yeah. the heart yeah. of so what is an MOS technology. Or so CMOS. what was in the what was in the color RAM? Is this the palette? Yeah, the yeah. It, it, the, the four bit the, color, the four bit four color, bit. Oh, right? Because okay. again, I didn't have enough bandwidth of things, and I said, okay, where am sure. I going to get the color from? And we yeah, stuck so you made a RAM twelve bit out. address bus, right? Basically. Okay, yeah. right, and that was connected up, I assume, to a to a little SRAM. 
Right. Tiny okay. little tiny two little one one four. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it just sounds like it just sounds like nepotism. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so we basically stuck that out there, but then we had to have a way for a processor to get it, and so the cheapest solution is a pass transistor. Oh uh, yeah. And that so way, the four hundred six six or. Was it the 4066? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Quad by yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. Quad, the quad, yeah. quad, quad by direction. Yeah, that's so great. It's yeah. a really cheap bi yeah, yeah, no, buffer. It's <laughs> wonderful. It cost yeah. me a penny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was yeah. so Quite cheap. Literally. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, they've been making them since the 60s. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. And we're buying them in millions. So, yeah. Yeah. so now I remember what I was going to ask. Okay. So you said for the VIC 1 chip, and I can I, I wish we had a photo of this. You said you know 12 foot wide or whatever, where you <laughs> had the entire did, so. the entire timing right. uh, for that whole thing. Yes. For the VIC 2 chip, was that how you thought of the design and the DMA yes. timing and all the rest of that? Yeah, I did. I did, and I actually re, you know I made another big giant one. Wow. wow. Okay. Because I, I couldn't figure it out any other way. I mean, now I did have extra small areas where we just had to sprite stuff and you watch, sure. okay, now what happens if this mm -hmm. particular sprite has priority and, and now you, have the, you want to go over the background? Right. Or, yeah. So I, 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 I timed mm -hmm. that all out, mm -hmm. but it's small this, piece. This may, the, did you also not think in terms of choices? Well, I've got this memory slot and I have this memory slot, but I could I be reading this, or maybe I could be reading that, or something like that. Or was it no, wasn't fixed? No, it, it was it was it was a flow. I, I really looked at it as a as a as a process flow, sort of. I mean, almost like an instruction set kind of a thing, but a fixed instruction sure, set. Sure, sure. You you had okay. Yeah, I'm picturing the 6502. The, the way it's that, that was what I used as, as sort right. of a mental the, model as to how the flow. I can see the left to right flow in it. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it was very much a 6502 architecturally. Okay. So mm -hmm. essentially, you have a line, and, and then now you have what if you have. Think of a line as an instruction set of things mm -hmm. you're going to do at each line. Okay. So as the data is streaming out, you have these this information that's going to say what happens at each particular pixel point. Mm -hmm. So that's what the flow structure looked like. Because in that way, it didn't. I, if I had the time, I could put more, more sprites in because sure, it was sure. a flow structure rather yeah. than fixed in timing and that I mm -hmm. had these fixed structures. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 that made it very malleable so that I could manage the whole thing. Hmm. So that, okay. that's why I architect. Yeah, that makes, that makes good yeah. sense. Do, do you remember the Ultramac, the Ultramax? No, I don't, no. So the 64 is compatible with the Ultramax. Okay. So you build in Ultramax compatibility. I didn't know that. <laughs> I know that because I had to build in Ultramax compatibility. Oh, okay. So you and me share something. <laughs> Make an Ultramax mode, oh, okay. which was like a 2K RAM only as this oh. oddball thing. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, we broke it one time. <laughs> That's how I know it's That's how you know that. Okay. Dave, you remember breaking Ultramax mode? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was in the PLA, yeah, it was one term, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't really PLA at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we made it in 48 pins, the PLA. Oh, I know you did, yeah, yeah that yeah. was a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I was, that was another thing. I you didn't have 48 pins. There were 48 pins, pins no. did not exist then. It was no. 40, that was it. There was nothing bigger than 40 pins, so, so that was another problem. Right, mm -hmm. and we talked about, like, the colors, you know, I get, why well, only 16? It was like, we didn't even have the pins on the big chip for more. <laughs> no. Let was, alone the room and, right, and everything yeah. like that. And also it was a four, you know, you have a four-bit RAM, how many colors? That's right. the, the basically yeah. all you get, you know? Okay, so, yeah. And I've been asked that about the 128, why didn't you do it? And my answer that I actually would have busted the big chip, and by that I meant we couldn't have just added some stuff in the color area, we would have had to expand the size of the die, start moving things on the VIC chip right. to include a 4-bit data path. Mm -hmm. And then if we had an external 8-bit RAM, we would have had to make 4 bits of it go away in 64 mode or it would have been incompatible because people wouldn't, wouldn't load an AND, you know, 0F. Right. They would just load it and expect an F to be in the top, right? Mm -hmm. right? So we would have had to break the RAM. To, to do 64 yeah. mode. Back converts compatibility is a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. So, so people said, why didn't you do it? I said, I thought about it for all of three seconds and said no. You know, and I, I figured it would bust the die, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, because it was packed. It was packed, it yeah. Was... Diori used to show me. I mean, because you, you can tell all the additions. They're kind yeah. of around the edge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's on this side of the pad, right. it's, it's an addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So here's the, here's the color circuitry or the the color circuitry on the outside. So right, you've got, as, it, as it comes out. I, I never get tired of looking at this. 
And this is before the modulator was heavily customized for us. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah so it, it uh, so you've got the uh, just the, the brightness coming out right uh, along with the sync signals and then the the, the two phase color color stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the two phase color stuff was this uh, again the resistive ladder and what you have like two bits three bits of it was uh, three bits I believe yeah eight. okay yeah. eight okay yeah sounds good and yeah. were the was with the was the brightness just uh, uh, one bit or did you have multiple? No, there was. Well, I think there was grays in the color mix. It was a four oh, okay. bit, so there's oh, grays okay. in the color. Okay. Okay. So there's uh, two there grays. Was, maybe there was two, two grays. grays. Yeah. Black and white. Right. Okay. Yes, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So two bits coming. Yeah. Out. Neat. Neat. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. In the TED, we tried to shoot for 128 colors, but eight shades of black is still black. So yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's like the blue against the blue. Flickering, but you can't tell because it's blue. Blue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. That was just, I mean, tailoring. They're just trying to tweaking that circuitry to get it all to look good on the screen. Oh, and, sure. And, yeah. and to be compatible with the modulator that we purchased at right. the time, mm, and okay. so it had to feed it exactly what it wanted to see. Wow. Because that wow. was the mm -hmm. Blackguard RF stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, originally, didn't the Vic Twenty the not the modulator? You had to have an external switch. Oh, we, maybe we did on the 64 too. Or what did you have an? Ex, there was a, a point in time where the modulator had to be external to pass FCC, and then they changed the rules. And I, I'm I'm talking way yeah, out that's, of the yeah, I, that that point, that point certainly point. not in the 64. Uh, maybe the 20. 20 because again, that was done in Palo Alto, yeah, but, so I, I wasn't right. involved in, in yeah, the, I think in the, the details of that. The, the 20 it did never had a never had an internal. Lot. Modulator, modulator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it may only, be. only two. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It does. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's what I that was my understanding as well. At some point, yeah. somebody paid money to the FCC and right. suddenly you could put, <laughs> that's put modulators. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's pretty clear. <laughs> and then Mitsumi paid money to say, yeah, we'd like to be qualified to be part of this mess. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's uh, good let's stuff. see. So um, we've got another, I guess, three minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe this is time for audience questions. Yeah, I, yeah, as much fun as it is to uh, uh, yeah, chat there's among usually, the three There's usually a half an hour's worth of questions. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> so. uh, hang on. To look at the illustrations of the, of the die, the two, the VIC and the VIC-2, yeah. it's obvious the density is much greater on the latter as it would be expected. Yeah. What kind of geometries were you able to produce at that time? I heard earlier that the yields were on the order of 20 to 30 percent in initial run, and I know this is a consumer product, so, but, but it looks like everything is crammed down to the last micrometer to get yeah. that uh, big two created. Yeah. See, what, this is the kind of question you get at VCF. Right. What, what, right. what, what, where, how did he even what, know to ask that? What kind I'm of sure. rules were you, you like one or something like that? I, I can't oh, no, no, it was, it was point. I, I, you know, this is funny. We, this is before metric, okay? Right, right. That's why I'm, that's why I'm confused. <laughs> it was 0. 0.3 mils or 0. 0.35, and then we would do a 10% shrink. Shrink, that. right. Okay, so I think it was point, the, the smallest geometry we could make was 0. 0.35 mils, which I can't do. Somebody the, look that up. In I can't do the micron in my head. It's, it's got to be. <laughs> I've forgotten how to do it's that. It's got to be like in four or five. Oh, I four is, like that. is the it's, micron. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so whatever it is. Um, yeah. So it was 0.35 was the smallest so, one we could so do. So this was so big it was still in imperial units, I think, is <laughs> right. yeah. to, to sum this up. Well, maybe going in the other direction, if you, if, when you started the chip design now, if you work for, if you work on geometry and forget that comes down to manufacturing, mm -hmm. what kind of transistor budget are you looking to have to work with that? Okay, that you, you okay, that's where you tried to create block structures so that you could manage that. Okay, I knew how much RAM would be and what space that would take up. I knew how much a counter would be. So you would do an architectural overview of this and say, okay, I can only make this chip on a side or something, something like, like that, that. Yeah. 210 yeah. mils on the side, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you start laying these things out and you do it for enough years, you get a sense of, okay, a counter's this big and I need this many counters. So you could start to lay out, just like you would lay out a house. Right. You go, okay, this is how much I'm going to for the living room. And this or, is... or a printed circuit board. Right. I mean, so you get, you get a sense of it from that perspective. And um, 
that's where we, we did it that way. And I knew approximately or before starting, I would be in that rough range of where I would be. So it was really ex experience that told me how big I could make it. But again, it's all, it's cells. But so I knew how big a cell was. And the longer it went on, the more you knew. You, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, were, were most of the transistors minimum size or were they all over the map? Most, the internal stuff is mostly in minimum size. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't until you got to like clock generators or the right, analog right. sections. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you didn't have as much, I mean, you would ask me mm -hmm. about checking the transistor sizes. Okay. I never wanted to do that. <laughs> 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 they had to make sure that the logic was the logic and, and you mm -hmm. didn't, you tried to get away from that and you knew you had the, the speed to get through it. And, and One only of the changes Diorio slid into the VIC chip for us then is we found a game that had flipped a mode. I don't want to say flipped it to PAL mode even though it was an NTSC mm -hmm. Some Something you or I would not think somebody would do, do. on the fly. Right. And the transistor was a small transistor and it took almost the entire line to switch. Oh. <laughs> and so you saw the RAS get skinnier and skinnier oh, and then no. finally go away. And of course, it ruined every DRAM every content of the, wow. of the thing. Uh -huh. right. And Diorio looked at it and said, "This nobody ever thought it'd be used, switched yeah. dynamically. Who would do you that? Know? And he made it into a 207 or something. Right, yeah, like some that, big know? transistor to drive. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of things you don't think about because somebody, there's always so somebody, somebody in it. software poking it. What would this would do? Right, <laughs> right. And you don't think about it. And then it. we got stuck on and if you don't do it too correctly, because for some reason right, our big right. chip acted different, then you're not compatible. Mm -hmm. So we had to go in oh. and make it so you could flop these on the fly. That's, 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 yeah, you don't in, think of In many respects, thing. I feel like I'm responsible for this <laughs> um, as, you know, as a member of the teaching uh, world and so forth. Uh, what, our, what our students do is, you know, we give them an assignment, uh, they code it, they run it, it doesn't work, they randomly change it, they run it again, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. And as soon as it works, uh, they turn it in and they move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure it's a similar sort of thing. It's like, oh, was this a good idea to do? No. Did it work? Why, yes. OK, ship it. <laughs> oh, I, I remember the three seconds it took me to make a decision on things and then move on. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. simply didn't spend. And we were in no IBM time. where you needed to call a committee meeting and, right. and, and do that kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, was, that was the fun of, of It was the fun back of it. Then. Yeah. I mean, every, there, everybody was a startup. I mean, really, even though Commodore was a little bit bigger because it had the calculator business. But because it was a startup, you, you had freedom. I mean, you, you got just, to make decisions. Yeah, and it yeah, was never absolutely. a committee. Yes. So one thing I always wondered about is, like, I understand the limits of the four bits leading to the 16 colors, but how were the 16 colors decided upon? Right. <laughs> I told you you'd get that. I know. You did. Right, because it, if you look at like the, the history of games, it, it, the colors are used in very different ways. Right. There's a kind of black ba background period. There's this kind of embossed period where you use the, the, the light blue and the it dark was the, blue. It was, so it, was, it was somewhat serendipity. Okay. And there were certain ratios that would fit and that would work. <laughs> okay, honestly, this was sort of like driven by the hardware. And some looked like crap. Uh, yeah, I, but I didn't, I mean, I had eight to choose from. And like, okay, this is how these resistors, and there's enough separation from one to the next. And from a perspective of the manufacturing, they would be about always the same. So it was a situation, I knew I needed the primary, so I had to fix those. And then right. after that, it came down to what was left. So is it okay. phase angles that would play nice together? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and enough room yes. for the ones left. Yeah. yeah. So well, it was serendipity. Those, you know, once you get through the primaries, it's like, okay, what can I squeeze in here? Yeah. Part, part of the trick also is you have to remember this was aiming at NTSC. And, and you know, there's a similar story for PAL. It's e equally twisted and so forth. <laughs> but RGB is a modern invention, yes. right? Yep. At the time, uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, what is it, YIQ is the space or whatever. And it's nothing like anything you ever want to design as a human being, there was a whole bunch of, you know, how can we make this and, and do it and all. So trying to get a pure color, you know, just red is ferociously difficult. Yes. And if you look at all of the machines of that time that would display on normal, uh, none of them have red, really. None of them have blue, really. It's all weird sort of combinations it's, of all the rest of that. This is days when TVs had tint controls, too. So you would make the colors be right, whatever you yes. want. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's, that's I why mean, it's called never the same color. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, there's, there's a very good reason for that. Right? I like it. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, when I first read about it, as I said, I wanted to put color in. I, had, I was in the library and read about all this, and I went, 
you are kidding. <laughs> I mean, because you I mean as a digital guy, you go, why isn't there an R and a B and a G and I could just change the, the way we have it now? It's, it's a much more sensible solution to the problem. But you know, going from black and white to color, and this is how they squeezed color into and be backwards compatible with the old color sets. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the person who came up with this demented, but that's what they came up with. <laughs> well, it was actually a backwards compatibility problem. Yes, correct. Right. It For, was. It yes. was. How do you how do you broadcast color uh, and make it work on a black, black and white set? Right. So, so it wouldn't impact yeah. it. It's right. The same right. shimmering problem I had. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. yes. Yeah. Similar. Similar. Similar right. And they build in different relationships mm -hmm. to try and counteract those. Exactly. Yeah. So, but so it was really a a okay. Once I get red, yellow, green, and and a few of those blue, then it was like okay, what what's yeah. you know, cyan came up. <laughs> Orange is problematic because it's so close to the color burst. Right. Too. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it was. It was. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know I needed a few, and I, whatever fell out after that was sort of where it landed. Just, unfortunately. just, just compare the colors available on the C64 to that on the Apple II, and you'll suddenly realize what you know paradise <laughs> in the Commodore is by comparison. Paradise. By comparison. <laughs> I just wanted to add real quick that uh, in the broadcast world, there, are, there were certain colors that were illegal that would tweak out television sets, and red was actually one of them. It has yeah. to be a, a certain uh, frequency, or otherwise TV sets they, would get kind of messed up. They used to tell them not to wear red suits, and wear, even Santa Claus <laughs> right. outfits on about TV that? were, were yeah, bad. This, this, yeah. is, this is like the brown note, but a visual thing or something? Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> How about that? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> uh, in fact, um, I have this history, so the, uh, let's see, before the opening credits run in Blade Runner, there's this, this red thing that comes on. And it's taken about 30 years before I could actually see that on any of the TVs that I, I saw, it. and it's exactly the red. So you've confirmed what I've suspected all along. <laughs> red is out to get you. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <clears throat> any other questions? Yeah, usually you guys got a lot of questions. Uh -huh. Just shout them out. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered a lot. Yeah. yeah. Try to, yeah. yeah. Let's see, I'm trying to think if I have any, any questions. We've talked a lot. We, yeah, we've yeah, talked, we, we, Albert and I have talked some six, seven hours now, and, and, <laughs> and it's always new stuff we're talking about, so yeah, we pretty much the exhausted that, uh, We played the, did you know this guy? We yeah, played that right, game. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it was a good team. I mean, um, it was another guy, uh, Jim Redfield, he was right. also mentioned him. He was a guy who really helped me with all the logic of the flow between the, the background and the sprites. He was really instrumental mm -hmm. in helping okay. me get that right. So, yeah. and, and you guys were working without ERCs or DRCs, electrical rule checks or design. Nothing. And and this is real important. They would draw a schematic and there was nothing that said, yeah, we made the chip like you made the schematic. Right. It, it was all hand checked during that time. Yep. And when Jim Rebfield came back to Commodore, um, somebody pulled me aside as he walked down the hall and said his sprite collision logic worked the first time. You know, and, it was just, that, and that was just wow. Yeah, there was a lot of it was it was just you had to keep things simple, but yet keep them. Flowing. It, it had to work. Yeah. Had to work. I mean, you, you really didn't have any choice, where you couldn't get. I mean, FPGAs are so wonderful now. I mean, you can just try things and oh, if that doesn't work. Let me try something else. And, and you didn't. You never had that luxury. Um, another story about. Uh, when, when I left Commodore, okay, they gave me a very large pair of dice as I was leaving. Okay, why would they give me a big dice? Because what I would say is after, after about a month of checking it, okay, I go, listen, let's just roll the dice, dice. and get this thing the hell out of here. <laughs> it's, it's tempting, too. I, oh. I've watched chip designers wear out a oh. brilliant person after three months, and they're, they're just they're like, like right, yeah. just beat up and you're mm -hmm. rolling the dice and see what happens because I'm tired of checking this damn thing. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so we got into a thing where we started revving the chips. We, we went to, well, mm -hmm. in all fairness, chips got more smaller and yeah. more complicated. Mm -hmm. But we were starting to do three and four revs to get chips to Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, you, it, as your complexity goes up, you're, you have no yep. choice for that because you're yeah. trying to do more. And then that's, I mean, I always look at it as we were designing computers to help us design computers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. 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 No, I mean, that's what you had yeah. to do, definitely. Absolutely. And it was, it was, uh, but it was, it was fun because, I mean, back then, you think about it, and even today, I mean, you can do, you can do a custom chip today or, or you know, a, a Sea of Gates kind of thing for, $100,000 or less, really. 
Okay, custom. Yeah, maybe, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would have to be there's, Seagate's. There's, but, yeah. Yeah. And there's Seagate's. free programs going on, too. Right. Google yeah. will yeah. Yeah. shoot your chips yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, but back then, I mean, the cost of producing that even was, was in the 50 Quarter million dollars for a right. half lot or a lot. Right. Yeah. It yeah. was crazy. And that's why it was like, okay, you had to do everything to get, to get it right. But mm -hmm. it was a shot in the dark. I mean, you just had to go, okay, I'm going for it. You know, and it and it and it, it was some sleepless nights between when you said oh. ship it to when it came out. We, we would take we would take the chip guys out to the bar and just like, yeah, here, sit down. Thing, you know, like, yeah, it was it was nerve wracking. Like you know, it really was. But there was a pride in the fact that, you know, you spent all that time and, and it was always that pride of saying, Okay, I'm gonna get to work in in one or two ribs. And, Right. Yeah, that was always the, the benchmark of a, of, mm. a, of a chip designer at the time, is they getting at work in that period of time. Remarkable. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was, it, it was truly stuff. remarkable. It was fun yeah. stuff, you know. Thank God I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just did, the last chip I did, did um, uh, I did a chip about three years ago. I still, I'm still working. So I'm, I mean, consulting and things, okay? okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's a whole different world. Everything is standard cells or, I mean, this was had some analog stuff in it too. Hmm. But again, it's like with all the EDA and, and checking ERC yeah. and the simulation capability, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, the only thing that didn't work the first time was some of the analog stuff needed to be tweaked. Right. So you have another rev to tweak the analog stuff, but sure. because you have so many tools at your disposal, you, you can get it almost perfectly right the mm -hmm. first time around. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah. then you're really not using the tools well. Yeah. You know? Well, the stakes have the stakes have also gone up, right? Oh, you know, a quarter of a million dollars or whatever. Like, you know, yeah. what is that? You spend that on one mask now or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> one. Now, one of the tricks we, we were doing that the chip guys was, we, we called it a one, two, three, where there were six layers total in these chips, and they would t uh, divide the lot into two and only do one, two, three on, on the whole thing and save it. And so if they had fixes that yeah. they could do top in layer. the top three layers, they would do that, pull out the one, two, threes, add four, five, six to it, and run it again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, I had a four, five, six save my life. It, it threw itself <laughs> in front of the bus, you know, and literally saved us yep. for CF. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be definitely. Um, well, that's why we have Gatorades. Yeah, yeah right exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we had Gatorades the next year. It, it was pretty funny how you know, when people ask me questions, well, why didn't you do this? And it literally, it didn't exist for another year, another two. But it existed pretty soon after that. You know? mm -hmm. right. but, but things were moving fast. That's the fun part of doing it. That's the, yeah. yeah. It really was. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Right. Well, speaking of moving fast, I think we are officially over uh, okay. time at this point. But this is wonderful. Can we thank our, uh, our panelists yep. here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.